Hey guys, it's been a few videos now since I took a look at an operating system and this is a pretty interesting one. This is Endless OS. Uh, it seems that it's based on Debian but it is a far cry from, uh, from its Debian roots. This is a distribution designed to be used with limited or no internet access. Now I've always been a fan of these um, specified purpose Linux distributions, these Linux distributions that have a goal and an idea in mind and they work towards that goal. And this is to basically have a computer that doesn't rely on internet connectivity because we connect just everything to the internet nowadays, our TVs, our phones, uh, you know, our, our tablets and obviously our computers. And you know, if you've got smart devices as well, those are uh, games consoles. So this is a bit of a respite from all of that, to be able to have a computer that is like your realm, your domain, where you control all of the data on it and you're not subject to the terms and conditions of goodness knows who over in goodness knows where. So this it aims to be an answer to this in, um, in a majority of ways. Uh, it's designed to be user friendly, so I would imagine that the target user group for this is probably not many of you guys. Most of you guys, I imagine, to be sort of pretty tech savvy kind of people who aren't afraid to work things out and would prefer a little bit of customization on their system. And this is if this is not a distribution for those kind of people. This is a distribution that you might put on a family computer. You might set up with with one of your parents who who aren't really into computers but want something quick and easy to use. Uh, and if you live in uh you know like rural parts of Wales like I do or um or rural parts of any other country where the internet connection is, you know is not reliable uh, or not that great or whatever then this definitely could uh, could fill a niche uh, the website itself is one of those uh, websites that sort of takes up a lot of space with very short uh, sentences which uh, I generally find to be quite uh, sort of user friendly from a newbie standpoint but it's uh, a few of you have complained in the comments that these these design of websites are just so inefficient with space that it can get a little bit frustrating and I, I certainly get that. So anyway, this one explains in, in its short uh, elevator pitch um, basically that it comes with hundreds of apps that you don't necessarily need internet access for. Uh, it gives you Windows, Linux and Mac instructions and what is interesting as well is on the download page it only gives you the option to get a torrent. I like this. I like this. It's again. It's it's not. It's that is not the most user friendly way to do it. And I, uh, you know, and this is a user friendly distribution. So that might possibly be a problem to some people who don't know what a torrent is if they're trying to do this for themselves. That being said, of course, torrenting is a is a great technology for shifting around large file size, uh, large sized files to uh, a large number of people. So um, so it is perfect for the distribution of Linux. Dist um, the perfect for the distribution of Linux distributions. Um, however, I may, could could that could that confuse a few new people? And it gives it a little bit more um, text in short sentences um, or in short chunks here. And again, it talks a little bit about the hundreds of apps making it useful from the moment you turn it on. And yes, uh, the uh, ISO that you download, I believe mine was uh, 13 gigabytes or thereabouts. So it comes with a light version. I, I downloaded the full version because I wanted to see what apps were included with it. And um, and there's loads. It's great. So uh, let's get on to the. Oh yeah, just before I crack on, uh, I want to give like a special mention to the fact that it does actually sell computers with its OS already on. Uh, turn your TV into a family home computer, so it's got a function that you could turn into like a, a TV box, uh, which is great then because you could burn your your DVDs um, into digital media if you're, if you live in one of the countries that, where that isn't illegal. Um, and then you can just have like your movies in, on your digital media, uh, and then just, uh, flick through like you would with anything else. So yeah, there's a lot of uses for this, even though it's a pretty, uh, sort of rounded off, um, user-friendly, uh, distribution. So, um, so the, yeah, and I think that when you've got a um, an operating system and a company that actually sell the Linux distribution with a machine like this, or like with Ubuntu Mate, I think that's a, a real step in the right direction because there are a lot of people that either want to get into Linux or they want an operating system that they can be reasonably assured that um, viruses aren't too much of a problem. Um, or you know, or, or, or for whatever reason, but there is this hardware ca compatibi compatibility issue, and if you are a new user, crikey, you don't want to be getting tied up in whether or not your hardware is compatible with your software. That is just something I would, I can't imagine people being any less interested in if they're not interested in computers. So, 
if you you know if you want Linux, you want this operating system, and you're willing to spend like seventy nine US dollars, that is a bargain. That has got that is a bar that's three USB ports. Um, so it comes with a gig of RAM. Considering this distro runs GNOME, <laughs> uh, 24, oh, 24 gigabyte solid state storage. Uh, so yeah, it's like far from a top of the range machine for that seventy nine quid. Uh, f but that is good for seventy nine dollars if you you know that is. And then it, then you've got the quad core two gig of RAM for ninety nine dollars again, great price. And then it goes up and up in price. But again, these are still very reasonably priced boxes. Some of these look nice, actually. So, yeah, um, I've always got a, uh, I always got a special thumbs up for distributions that, um, if you know, that either include hardware with it or um, point you to where you can buy hardware. They include a hardware shop with it, rather, um, because I do feel that there, you know, there can always be the hardware compatibility issues, and this just nips it in the bud. It's like, well, you want a computer that runs ROS for a low price. You know, I mean, what's a Chromebook nowadays? 130 quid? There's less than a Chromebook. Obviously, you do need the um, keyboard, mouse, whatever you want to control it with. But if you're plugging it into a TV or what have you, you can mitigate those costs pretty substantially if you're looking for a TV computer. So, And this, you know, this could be. If you've got like a handheld mouse, one of those mice that you can operate without a desk, then you might have something there. But um, uh, I digress. Uh, and this is, yeah, this is just the front page of the operating system. And it gives you... It, and it, yeah, it gives you a bit of a rundown here. You can actually see some of the similarities it has with smartphones, particularly Androids, um, and it's preloaded with content. Yada yada. Okay, so enough rambling about the website. It's a good website. Definitely gets a thumbs up on on my end. And uh, one more thing I do like about it before I leave the website uh, is that it does come with one desktop environment, and it doesn't even mention what the desktop environment is. It gives you one solid download, and that's what you do. And I do wish more newbie-friendly distributions did that because I can imagine so many people being confused with 32-bit versus 64-bit, uh, and and a lot of people don't know the difference between KDE and GNOME and LXDE and XFCE and Cinnamon and Budgie. It's you know a lot of people. It's a faff they don't want to deal with. So if you just have a distribution that focuses solely on on that one sort of environment and that one objective, then I think there's uh, there's a lot to be said for it. Okay, right. Um, you minimize all windows. This is interesting. There is no minimize all windows on the interface. You just have to press the Windows Meta Super Key. Uh, and this gets you to like your home screen, which is basically icons on the desktop with a search bar. The search bar is pretty good. Um, I don't know what I, I, I could uh, type into it. Skype, it finds your Skype there. It also looks in the encyclopedia for you because this uh, comes with an encyclopedia. So the default application of Note is that it comes with Google Chrome, not Chromium, not Firefox, not anything like that. Google Chrome. Um, again, this is, again, a good choice for newbie-friendly distributions. I know it is not the open source way, and 99 times out of 100, if it's open source, it's preferable to me. However... Netflix is one of the things that a lot of people do with their machine, and if this is geared towards potentially being a living room PC, you're going to want Netflix out of the box support, and I think Google Chrome really is the only one that can reliably do that. I know that there's, uh, I know that Firefox recently managed to be able to build up official support for it, but Google Chrome, you know, it's it's that's that's its wheelhouse. It, that's it, you know, that's exactly what it's good at doing so I think they, they did make the right decision even if it isn't the one that I would have made um, what is interesting about the overall interface here and I do like you know I like the search bar that's a good it's the gnome search bar function so it's nothing particularly outstanding there it comes with a few categories so you've got social curiosity it seems to have pretty easy access pretty neat access to all of the applications that are installed in just a few small menus from the desktop uh, and I can you sort the menus you can move things over to the favorites on the side uh, and then you can move things. So I can move Skype, which uh, I, I installed Skype specifically just to see how the install process works. And it works using, well, you click on more apps and then it opens it up. Um, and you can list the installed apps. And you. this is basically the GNOME Software Center. It's a little bit uh, polished. Looks. It looks lovely, doesn't it? Doesn't that look like an absolutely, a, that, that looks... 10 out of 10 for getting a good software center down. It is, the, it is clearly the GNOME software center with a bit of a reskin, but I, I like it. It's good. It's, and and this, this just goes to show that as a distribution, this takes care of the little aesthetic things that you, know, you might not really care too much about, but have an impression to people new to the distribution. Stuff like that is particularly important, I feel. So um, anyway, installing something 
Oh, it, but it does make that fatal error of putting um, applications that are already installed in the featured applications category. I don't even know why you do that. GIMP comes installed. Why are you suggesting I use it? Um, and it comes with a decent amount of games. Uh, it seems to come with good accessibility, but um, but it is that is an area I'm not, not too knowledgeable on. What's it? What's translate? That's also. Um, is that, is that a link in from... Okay, that's interesting. Uh, Open Arena, that's installed. Wow, it comes with Open Arena installed. That's quite interesting. Let's... Uh, what about games? But does it come with Steam installed? Now, I did see Steam in the... You'd, you'd expect that to be top of the featured items list. Uh, this is not installed, interestingly enough. Easy enough to install. I suppose it's a bit pointless uh, having Steam installed natively because if this is a distribution which edges towards offline usability steam is like all about the online so all right i get that uh this is however since it is uh, based on debian i believe um steam should work like flawlessly uh with it because steam is designed to be run on debian um well, Steam is designed to be run on Debian so far that Steam OS, the official Steam Linux distribution, is based on Debian as well. Uh, but they do say, like, write your applications for Ubuntu compatibility. But it's all... Um, but i got to say, you know, even running Steam on something like Manjaro or Arch, I, I, Steam works really well cross-platform. You know, Valve deserve a real big round of applause for that one. Okay, so I looked at some of the um, default apps. Picture of a dolphin. Actually, interestingly enough... If you open photos, it comes with a decent selection of um, of just uh, sample images. Sunflower butterfly, blue dolphin, colourful houses. Can't beat some good colourful houses. And then it gives you a very, very basic um, a, a sort of photo application. I can't seem to catch the name. It just calls itself Photo Editor, as you can see there down at the bottom. But uh, it covers the basics there. It, you know, it, 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 this is what you might expect out of, um, you know, like a Google Photos app or anything like that. It does come with the GIMP, so you can expect some decent photo editing if that's more your speed. Uh, this is the files. Um, was Nautilus, I believe. And uh, this is the default file manager for GNOME. It's a solid file manager. No complaints with it there. So there we go. What else have we got? Uh, the Skype that it comes with is the Skype for Linux beta. So that's the Electron app. Good. Uh, I would have expected that. It's nice to see that included. It wasn't installed with the application. Again, because this is an, uh, because it is an online specific application, I imagine that's their reasoning behind it. Solid reasoning, I guess. Um, easy enough to install. Easy enough to work with. Brilliant. VideoNet. This is an interesting one. So this is an application that I haven't seen in any other distribution, so I assume they developed this one in-house. Um, it's basically a video browser. So if we want to see some cat's videos, I'm sh maybe there's some on the internet I've heard. Uh, and there we go. So I think all of these videos are from YouTube. So... So this is just a YouTube browser. Again, if this is something you know, if you're if you if, if you're the kind of person that doesn't really subscribe to many channels and just you know wants to see cat videos and just types in cats, or you know, if the search function and the view function are the only two things you really need from YouTube, an ability to find videos and the ability to watch videos, then this app clearly has you covered. And again, if you're not a tech savvy person, that might be enough for you. And if it's not, Chrome is just over there. All right, so I can see that. And I can see that the audience they're trying to reach with that. Again, probably not something that would appeal to many of you guys watching this video. But again, like it's, you know, I think we all have that common appreciation that we want to see as many people um, on Linux as possible. Um, and we certainly want them to enjoy the experience uh, while they're there as well. Um, okay, so I'm going to show you now. This is a weird thing. The Facebook thing in the corner. This came with the operating system right out of the box. Uh, I don't have a Facebook account, so I haven't logged into it. Um, but it just seems like it's they've built in the Facebook Messenger or the Facebook app. Uh, or is it the Facebook? Quite possibly might even be the Facebook mobile page inside of a wrapper there. Uh, so that you can just act, um, access Facebook from your desktop. And I haven't found a way of getting rid of that. No, right-clicking. 
I don't know. Yeah, that one that one is strange. I'm sure there's a way to remove it, but I haven't found it yet. It comes, by the way, uh, the there is a very interesting um, tour that comes with it. Is there a welcome screen? Welcome, welcome, welcome. No. Uh, is there a... Uh, like an intro screen. I can't seem to find it. Okay, but anyway, basically this distribution as well has a really good um, opening and introduction theme. Uh, uh, open and like an, in a um, like a good welcome screen. So once it set you up with your username and password, it will then take you through a tour of the uh, desktop, a really detailed tour um, that ex explains the user interface, that explains the software that comes with it, and it's really, really, really good like really good um, so I got to give it like 10 out of 10 marks for that. it tells you the buttons to click and what they do and what you can expect and how to use the search and all of that kind of stuff and it walks you through it step by step it's brilliant so again um, most intermediate to advanced users will find this very much hand-holding very much training wheels uh, and you and you guys are probably not going to be too on board with that but Again, if this is a distribution that you're introducing to, um, to to friends and family, this um, or a distribution that you just don't want to faff around with, if you just want to plug something into your TV and have a TV um, a box, then then this is again, it's a good option. Uh, the settings are exactly stand uh, GNOME three standard. There is no GNOME three tweak tool included in this, but it's you know it, it's what you expect from GNOME. It's a solid, comprehensive. Um, settings in a nice easy way and you can get to that using this menu here this menu here is an interesting one because you might like at first confu confuse it for a start menu but it's really just a settings menu if that like it's just a way to shut down the, the computer the hot corner because this is like basically a GNOME 3 desktop isn't in the top left it's in the bottom right uh, and then you can just either click on it or select it and then that gives you the good overview of all of your your windows plus your favorite icons there i've only favorited mind test now but if i wanted to favorite the encyclopedia i could then just drag it over to the right and encyclopedia has been added to my favorites brilliant um so we can get rid of that i really like this as well having the preview of the window it's one of my favorite features of gnome so let's uh, let's have a look at the encyclopedia. So there you go. I've pulled up an example example article. It's like Wikipedia but offline. An encyclopedia. I <laughs> oh, great. I love it that I just sort of uh, described an encyclopedia as an offline Wikipedia. But there you go. Um, I don't know the source of this Wikipedia. Whether or not it's like, yeah, no, it is from Wikipedia. So it is literally an offline. Wikipedia. I thought that might be the case because Wikipedia releases its stuff under the Creative Commons license, as you can see down here. Whereas I can't think I can't think of any other encyclopedia that would do that off the top of my head. Like, you know, something like Encyclopedia Britannica is gonna gonna want a license fee. So, um, but yeah, you can just you can search for things. Um, I don't. Uh, um, there you go. I'll search for the USA. Or USA Network, USA Today. USA Today, National American Daily Middle Market Newspaper, published by the Gannett Company. So there you go. Um, pretty good. I haven't explored this encyclopedia to see all of what it covers because I can't imagine that they would include the entirety of Wikipedia there. Maybe it might be like the 10,000 most commonly viewed articles, 100,000 most commonly viewed articles. And it's a cleaned up interface as well. This is like this is a lot cleaner than the Wikipedia page. So, you know, if you're on a touchscreen device or you're on a uh, while you know a, a, like a wireless handheld mouse that's a little bit trickier to control because you don't have a desk, yeah, and you've got something. You know, it's it's uh, it's functional from that angle as well. The email uh, is um, evolution. It looks like it's just standard evolution. I haven't set it up because uh, I don't tend to like lo logging into my email in places that in random places but yeah evolution it's a solid email client especially when it fits into the gnome desktop environment i really like it um and this yeah there's like how to's as well so i've put um this how to application which you can find um curiosity yeah the curiosity section this is basically just a selection of encyclopedias and there is a how to uh how to dribble a basketball how to swim i'm in the sports section uh uh, but I could be uh, start mountain biking. 
Do they credit where this comes from down at the bottom as well? See, start mountain biking. It's, I would say this is WikiHow. Okay, so WikiHow. Um, so I think that's about everything I wanted to say about it. Um, certainly one of my more rambly um, overviews of one of the, uh, uh, these distributions. It does look like GNOME, but with a few... Imp uh, I'm not going to call them improvements because I actually prefer vanilla GNOME over this, but it does come across as being a bit more smartphone-y, a bit more smart tv -y. So, you know, like I can imagine this being the heads-up display or the the uh, intro screen on a, on a TV um, or on a laptop or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, it works well. Um, i got to say, distribution that I... Uh, I'm going to be keeping an eye out for um, because I think as a distribution that caters specifically to newbies and uh, those that are, don't want to be super connected to the internet, I think there's a real market for that. Now, I think there's going to be a huge problem getting the information, the knowledge that you've got an operating system directly for that group of people uh, and bringing that information to those group of people because I, I would imagine they don't really watch uh, much tech news. But... Um, there seems to be like a serious effort behind it. I'm not just talking about a community. I'm talking about money, you know, and and um, and marketing and all that kind of stuff. Like the people developing Endless OS, they're serious about getting this off the ground. And it could... I don't know if it could give Ubuntu a run for its money because Ubuntu and Endless are aiming for two entirely different market shares. Like Endless aims to bring like the... Like like a Linux operating system, but it, it, it seems to br bring a just a user-friendly operating system, and Linux just seems to be the, the, the best way to deliver that with Endless. Uh, and this aims just to be a new, user-friendly, not too uh, reliant on the internet kind of distribution, whereas Ubuntu, it does seem to have sold itself as the, the techier of the three main um, uh, platforms uh, Windows, Mac, and Linux. It's, you know, like, you, 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 you see developers on it. Uh, I saw Ubuntu on Robot Wars um, in the background on one of the screens the other day. So it's, you know, Ubuntu does seem to be a bit more of a strike for the techie market, um, whereas this definitely is a step in the in the opposite direction. This is this seems to be a step in the not techie market, um, as indicated by so many of the things they've made to make this distribution easy to get up and running. I particularly like the, you know, it's a, it's a good website. Uh, it's a good workflow. The installation procedure was excellent as well. It was incredibly simple, simpler than Ubuntu. Uh, for a distribution uh, that, that ha you know, has set out some goals and is is heading towards them and is you know set out to achieve them that they, they, this is a very good os by its its own measurements and i really want to see it go from strength to strength because this is really exciting stuff now again uh it's not one that i'm going to be picking up and using on bare metal or as a daily driver and i doubt many of you guys will either but next time someone comes to me asking for uh you know for some advice on linux i'm gonna be thinking about this one uh, and and maybe it might take a few, you know, a year or two before this development really, you know, really strikes out. But it's like, it looks like a near enough complete product now. You know, like, I, I can't think of anything, you know, I, I didn't come across any bugs, but again, this was run in a virtual machine, so you, you tend to get fewer bugs in a virtual machine. Um, you know, easy to set up, no problems, no complications, you know, no, no, you know, what the hell moments. It, it, it worked flawlessly. I didn't see any bugs. I didn't see, you know, the, the, I haven't even opened up a terminal and the idea of opening up a terminal just didn't even occur to me in the workflow of this. In fact, can we even get, yes. Yeah, so it does actually come with the terminal, interestingly enough. And it comes with, uh, yeah, so that's it. So it does come with the terminal. It comes with the GNOME terminal, which is a good terminal. So there you go. It comes with the terminal if you need it, but, um, I don't think it uh, really does. So that's about it for me today. Let me know what you think about the idea of an operating system designed specifically for offline use or perhaps um, for use with extended periods of, of offline time. Um, certainly um, would would make it more secure, wouldn't it? Like, I mean, you know, we hear about hacks every other day now um, and, and big hacks at that. And it's like, well, you know, maybe the answer is... Um, always connected might not necessarily be the most secure way of doing things, especially if you don't know too much about computers, you just want something nice and friendly at home, 
and this this you know this ticks all of those boxes i yeah like i say couldn't sing this um distribution's praises highly enough um let me know what you think of it down in the comments section below uh that's about it from me today thank you very much for watching and until next time i've been chris ware and you've been awesome take care now